Okay, the next concept we have colligative properties. Generally, colligative is a Latin word. It is composed of two words, co and ligare. Okay? Co means together, ligare means uh, to bind. Okay, how can you define this colligative properties? Means the properties which are mainly depends on uh, amount of solute, amount of the solute. Not depends on the nature, or you can say irrespective of the nature. Okay, the properties mainly depends on amount of the solute. We are calling as one properties na colligative properties. We have four important colligative properties are there in this chapter. The first one we have relative lowering of vapor pressure. Relative lowering. In vapor pressure, okay. And the second one we have elevation in boiling point. Elevation in boiling point, which is denoted by delta J. And third one we have depression in the freezing point. Depression in Freezing point. This is delta F. And fourth one we have osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure, which is represented by pi of F. So simply we can write this one. R L may be what is R L may be relative lowering in vapor pressure. So these are the main four colligative properties. Sometimes they ask me here. Which of the following is not a colligative property, or which of the following is a colligative property? You can easily identify the option in the objective exam. Sometimes they ask also which of the following is a colligative or not colligative property. The first one we have a relative lowering in vapor pressure. A relative lowering in vapor pressure. Simply I am writing here R L W O. Relative lowering vapor pressure. So, what is the relative lowering vapor pressure? It is the ratio. It is the ratio of lowering the vapor pressure to the vapor pressure of the pure solvent only. So, derivation and law we not discuss here. Simply, we can write the formula related to which one the relative lowering in vapor pressure. So, I am writing here P naught minus P by P naught is equal to. Generally, we have the formula N one by N one plus N two. Okay, so P naught and P minus P by P naught is equal to N one by N one plus N two. So the colligative properties mainly applicable for the dilute solution. So me now I want to write the formula P naught minus P by P naught is equal to I can write here N two by N two by N one plus N two. P naught is equal to N two by N one by N two. Why here the concentration of the solute is very less when compared to the solvent. So the denominator we already neglected the term part we had to then we are getting a two by l one. Now I want to write here p naught minus p by p naught is equal to w two by m two into m one by w one log. What is n one and n two? N one and n two are the number of moles of the solute and solvent. N two we can imagine solute and n one we can imagine is what solvent. Then This is the formula we are getting. P naught minus P by P naught is equal to W two by M two into M one by W one. What is P naught? Vapor pressure of the pure solvent. What is P? Vapor pressure of the solution moment. P naught always greater than P. If the two values are given in the problem, we have to identify which is highest value that is P naught and which is least value that is P moment. Compare to solute and solvent. Okay. W2 and M2 represent the solute, and M1 and W1 represent what? Solvent. Solute weight is always less than solvent weight only. So M2 and W2 generally are observing the least values. That is W1 and W1. W2 is least when compared to which one? W1 only. Mainly in this calculation, they are asking to find the molecular mass of the solute, and sometimes they are asking to find the vapor pressure of the solution. That is what P also. So this is related to which one? Relative lowering in vapor pressure. 
So the next colloidal property we have elevation in boiling point generally represented by delta dB. We have know already what is a boiling point. Okay, the temperature at which vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to atmospheric pressure that we are calling as what ma boiling point of the solution. Now, yeah. So what is elevation means here increase the boiling point of the solution. Now. How the boiling point of the solution is increased means because a non-volatile solution is added to a volatile solvent, the vapor pressure of the solution decreases. When the vapor pressure of the solution decreases uh, and the boiling point of the solution is what increases, uh, the increase in the boiling point of the solution is called as what elevation in the boiling point that is noted by delta T B. Okay, delta T B. Directly proportional to molality is volume of delta T B is equal to K B into M omega. Okay, so I am going to write this one. Delta T B is equal to K B into what is the molality formula we have? W T B into okay, thousand by M T B into W one omega. Clear? So this is the formula we are using to. Identify to identify the elevation in the boiling point. In this uh, elevation boiling point, also mainly we are identifying the molecular mass of the solute and sometimes that's their uh, boiling point of the solution also. Clear? Okay. I am writing here uh, delta T B. Delta T B we are writing here uh, P B minus what ma P B na no? means. Uh, the difference in the boiling point of the solution to the boiling point of the pure solvent is called as what elevation boiling point. Generally, T B always greater than what ma T B na no. What is W two? W two is the weight of the solute. What is M two? Molecular mass of the solute. And what is W one? W one we are calling as a weight of the solvent. Okay. What is molality? Number of moles of solute present in one kg of the solvent. If you are not directly you are taking that the solvent weight in kg, only to write this thousand mole. Here and you can see here uh, always solute weight of the solute. Solute always least when compared to the solvent. If they give the values, one is least value, one is highest value. You can imagine identify the easily W two and what ma W one mole. And one more we have the constant is there kg. Generally, kb is a proportionally constant in this expression. Delta t is equal to kb, and kb we have different names of there. Here we can say boiling molar elevation constant. Molar elevation. Molar elevation constant. And one more here, boiling point elevation constant. Boiling point elevation constant and one more here we have ebullioscopic constant. Ebullioscopic constant. So, so these are the different names of the term. Kb only. What are the units of Kb? Units of Kb. Very important here. Kelvin kilogram mole inverse form. Kelvin kilogram mole inverse. How can you define this Kb? Okay. Okay. Kb can be defined as okay when the increase the boiling point of the solution when one mole of solute is added to one kg of the solvent. Okay. Different Kb ma. The increase the boiling point of the solution. By dissolving one mole of solute in one kg of the solvent, that we are calling as what elevation. Sorry, what you are calling the Kb that we can say ebullioscopic constant or boiling point elevation constant or we can say molar elevation constant. So this is related to which one means elevation in a boiling point. Uh, see the one more formula we have. Uh, Kb is equal to R into T square B into M by thousand into delta H vaporization. Here M is the uh, molecular weight of 
the solvent or in the gas form state and the T is the boiling point of the solution and delta H means enthalpy of vaporization and one more formula also I wrote here R K B is equal to R into T square divided by 1000 into L vaporization means L vaporization means latent heat of vaporization R means gas constant T P is the boiling point of the solution you know R value different units okay uh, 0.0821 eight atmosphere per mole kelvin, mole kelvin, 8.314 joule per mole kelvin, and uh, 1.98 calorie per mole. We have different units of gas constant is there. We can substitute all the values and we get what here. Kb, what is the Kb here? Kb is a uh, ebullioscopic constant or boiling point elevation constant or molar elevation constant. So this is regarding what this one means uh, elevation in a boiling point. So the next colligative property we have depression in a freezing point. What is a freezing point? Okay, the temperature at which liquid and solid having the same vapor pressure. The temperature at which liquid and solid having same vapor pressure that we call it as water freezing point. Okay. What is delta T F depression in the freezing point domain? When a non-volatile solution is added to a volatile solvent, the vapor pressure of the solution is what? Decreases. But uh, freezing point of the okay, freezing point of the solution also what not decreases. So let us see here delta T F directly proportional to M. Delta T F is equal to K F into M. Delta Tf is equal to Kf into this is the formula which one molarity W2 into 1000 by M2 into W1. W2 is what weight of the solute, M2 molar mass of the solute, W1 weight of the solvent. Here I will write here delta Tf is equal to Tf naught minus Tf. Tf naught what? Tf naught minus Tf. What is Tf naught? Freezing point of the pure solvent. What is Tf? Freezing point of the solution. Now I wrote the proportionality constant Kf we have. The proportionality constant Kf we have different names. That is a molar depression constant, freezing point depression constant, and one more the name we have cryoscopic constant on it. How can you define this uh, Kf? Okay. How can you define this Kf means? The decrease in the freezing point of the solution. The decrease in the freezing point of the solution when one mole of solute is dissolved in a one kg of the solvent. That is the definition of the one Kf only. Units of Kf as same as uh, Kb that is uh, Kelvin, Kilogram, Mole inverse. And Kf is equal to R into T square F into M by 1000 into delta H fusion. R is a constant. T square F that is a freezing point of the solution. M means what? Molar mass of the solvent. 1000 and this is delta H fusion enthalpy of the fusion moment. And one more we have Kf that is Kf is equal to R into T square F by 1000 into latent heat of the fusion. So these are the two formulas we are using to identify the Kf value. Okay, if they given okay freezing point of the solution and the molar mass of the solvent and the enthalpy of the fusion or latent heat of fusion they will give, they can use this uh, formulas. Uh, this is regarding about this one depression freezing point. What are the main applications of uh, depression freezing point? Means we have two important applications are there. Okay. One is uh, okay, uh, to decrease the freezing point of the solution, we want to use uh, some of the substances, uh, those we are calling as antifreeze salt. Okay, what is antifreeze? The substance which is used to decrease the freezing point of the solution, that we are calling as antifreeze domain. So, in the car radiators, we are using water. Generally, water freezes at what temperature? 0 degrees Celsius temperature. Suppose if the water can freeze in the radiator, then what happened here? The radiator will okay undergo glass hurricane, the radiator will be burst more. 
In that case, what are you using? We want to add some antifreeze to that uh, water. Here, what is the antifreeze you are using? Means we are using a uh, ethylene glycol. Okay, ethylene glycol we are mixing with the uh, equal proportions of water. It will decrease the freezing point up to how much? Means uh, minus 36 degrees Celsius only. So ethylene glycol is used as a antifreeze. Okay. And one more application, sir, to clear the snow on the roads. Okay, if the temperature is very less than one hundred, the water will form an ice, and that, that will be floats on the water only. So to remove that snow on the roads, so what we are using means sir, we are using a compound, a substance that is sodium chloride. The sodium chloride freezes at the Less than the freezing point of the water. Whenever we can spray that uh, NaCl on the snow on the roads, and what happen? That NaCl will decrease the freezing point of the solution. These are the two important applications of which one: depression point, freezing point.